Never judge a game boy by the case. This one is beautiful on the outside, but it's ugly on the inside. Let's take a look. I must say this has been a complete headache. I never want to open this game boy ever again. Oh, what the? This Nintendo Game Boy I picked up quality from eBay. It's in very nice condition. There's no signs of damage, corners. I've had the case open, so it's not screwed down properly. But as you can see, it's in very good condition on the outside. The inside, well, that tells a different story. Let's have a look. Oh, what's this? Like and subscribe. The battery contacts, nice and clean. And that's where the good news ends. Tetris, we have a corrupted Nintendo logo. Now I've already done some work on this in the past. I've repaired some traces and I have had it loading games. And this is it. I've repaired some traces, there's two here and one here. But unfortunately the front only gets worse. I was able to trace some pins from the bottom of the memory to the CPU. The, the traces run from the bottom of the memory underneath the cartridge slot and then up to the CPU. I want to take off the cartridge slot, resolder all of these trace wires. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give the board a good clean. To make cleaning the motherboard easier, I desoldered both of the daughter boards. The wires just disintegrated. When you got one left, this could be the end of it before I've even started. There we go. Those wires can easily be replaced. It looks like there's four good pads underneath there. A light brush with this fiberglass pen. With that board removed and that board removed, we'll pop this into some vinegar and let it have a soak. Okay, so we've got some white vinegar. And a very corroded Game Boy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to swap the vinegar over for some water with some bicarbonate of soda in. So that's the, the bicarb mix. This is the alcohol and that's going to get rid of the water after a good soak this is what we end up with I'm really trying to limit the amount of time I have the soldering iron on the board. I've whipped the pins and applied some flux with my hot air station set at 400. So I'm hoping I can get it off without melting the plastic. That looks okay. It's a lot of corrosion. Just here. So 
So now that I've cleaned the board up, pin one comes down to this wire that works. It comes along the wire to this point, this point for a beep, and this point for a beep. But it fails to get the pin turn. I wasn't recording because I'm an idiot. Pin one there on the CPU joins to pin 10 on the RAM. Comes down here to this wire. So I have contact there and I need contact here. This one should go up to here. I've made that too short. I'm going to take them both off and give myself a bit more space to play with. Just like that. It's voiceover time. This is where I go wrong. I attach the jumper wire to this wire, but when I refit the game slot and work on the same wire on the other side of the board, this original jumper falls off and I can't reattach it because it is now covered by the game slot. So my initial attempt at fixing this put some jumper wires from the bottom pins here on the ram up to the cpu pins just here i've removed the cart slot i've soldered tiny jumper wires down there now unfortunately this pin was soldered onto a wire underneath the card slot and when i put the card slot back on and i've soldered another trace to the wire on the other side of the board this one here the original one that i've soldered on underneath there must have popped off because i've lost continuity for it i had to put a new jumper wire directly from this pin to this pin to get it working in this section of the video i'm repairing three trace wires from the headphone connection the game boy speaker is faulty so it's important that i repair these traces so I can use an external speaker to test that the sound is working correctly. Oh, we've got a corrupt, corrupt Nintendo logo. I have a feeling I've dislodged something. Yes, I have dislodged something. That's the original one that went to the wire. Now wait a second, because that that wire here comes up to the middle one. So essentially, if I put this on the middle one, that would fix it. I take this off, pack that one onto there. It's all working fine apart from the screen. So we'll tackle that next. Let's make sure it still works. When, I, when I'm working on something like this, so I don't have to put batteries in, I solder on a couple of cables to the battery connectors. So with my power supply, I just hook them up. There we go. There's no sound on this. And I use my speaker. Plug that in. So the screen works, although it's got missing lines. The sound on the Game Boy itself works, but the speaker must be faulty. Let's take a look at the screen. It's missing quite a few vertical lines. So that's what I want to work on now. Now look at that one. Look at that one. It's hard to believe it's the same machine. The speaker's full of rust. That'll be why the speaker's not working.
Oh, there we go, a bit higher up. Yeah, it's looking good, I'll do the other side. Just about there. That's looking good. We'll switch it back on again. Make sure it's okay. That looks okay. I'll try it with the game in. Let's see how Tetris looks full screen. Put me speaker in. That's full screen. Marvellous. Let's take a look at this speaker. The speaker's not working because it's full of rubbish. Can we take this off? Broken wires. I'll take that speaker out while I'm here. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. I see lots of people on streaming and they've got the chat bot and they have chat messages pop up automatically with stream elements. This is my low tech version of reminding you to like and subscribe, please. I hope you like it. So let's start putting this back together. We'll take off these temporary power leads. These cables that I've put in are a little bit too thick to stop it from closing. Let's try that. I've lost a cable here. I'll have to take that off. I'll have to redo those cables with something smaller. I've been replacing the the wires which go down to the the power jack. The I've been replacing the wires which go to the headphone port, but I've lost the pad on the last one. I've lost the pad. And there's no way for us to solder to apart from the wire at the top here. I think I'm going to have to do that. The wire goes through the board, comes out here, and I believe it goes underneath the chip. There it goes. Goes to this capacitor. This is the trace I'm following. Okay, so I've replaced the, the thicker cables I had to the headphone port. Unfortunately, I've lost the pad, so I've Followed the trace up through the board to a capacitor, a little ceramic capacitor. I'm going to do the same for for these. Okay, so I've replaced all the cables with smaller Cat5 cables. And we've got a picture, we've got sound. Go it back in its case. And that'll be 95% finished. The only thing I haven't got is a replacement Game Boy speaker. But I'll order one up and we'll get that put in. Put back enough to test. Let's get some batteries. Put the speaker in. Right, final test. There we go. Fixed. Got some sound through the sound through the speakers. Buttons working.
So, 95% finished. Just missing replacement speaker. I'm going to call out a day on this one. This has been the most challenging, hardest project I think I've done so far. Not because the Game Boy is terribly difficult to work on, but the corrosion that it suffered from meant every time I sold out a wire or tried to fix a trace, as I was fixing one part, something else was falling off. And it made it very difficult. I've got multiple trace repairs. There's parts where the traces have just gone completely. So we've had to jump to the next available component. And I never want to work on a corroded system again. It has been a complete nightmare. But I'm glad it's finished. Almost. For our new speaker. And I hope you have enjoyed the video.